Hi, I'm Dee Dee, and after my story uh, that I was challenged to write um, by Steve England, it was called The Queen Under the Ivy, um, I was then uh, asked by Friends of Troopers Hill um, if uh, I could continue the story with the story of the Ivy Bee. Um, and so I had a little think about the Ivy Bee and I thought about the woodland and how uh, how I might make that into a story and um, this is what I came up with. Not so long ago there was a little bee. He lived in a sandy bank in the sunshine on the top of what is called Trooper's Hill. Not too far from there there's some woodland as well and the little bee was very lucky because this was ancient woodland, hundreds of years old, and he was able to get to the ivy flowers that were there. Why ivy flowers, I hear you ask? Well, this little bee, although if you looked at him, you might be mistaken for thinking he was a honey bee. He was actually an ivy bee, which means his favorite flowers were those on the ivy. And his busiest time of year was autumn, which was when the ivy flowers were blooming. Well, as it happened. The hazy hot days of summer were coming to an end, the leaves were starting to curl on the trees and autumn was indeed coming and the bee was readying himself for his busiest time of year. He would go to and from passing messages from the animals uh, because bees are very good at bringing messages to and from people and he would make sure his nest was very nice and tidy and he'd collect pollen from the other flowers where he could, but he was really just biding his time for those ivy flowers. Now, what I should say is in this woodland, there was a wise woman of the wood. She looked after the woodland and she was as old as that woodland. She'd not really been seen by many humans, but all the animals knew of her. Yes, they did. Because each day she'd come and check on them. She'd check on the badgers in their sets, make sure their young were good and healthy. She'd check on the rooks and the rookery and their chattering and catch up on all the gossip. And she'd check on the squirrels in their drays, make sure that they weren't being too busy. But her favourite animal to visit was the ivy bee, because it didn't seem to matter how busy the ivy bee was. He always had time for the wise woman of the wood. And the ivy bee, he looked forward to the visits from the wise woman. She would tell him of the comings and goings within the woodland so that then he could go and pass messages amongst the animals if he needed to. And he'd be able to tell them of what the humans were doing, of what they were planning and how the wise woman of the wood was using her magic to protect them and to guide the humans in looking after the woodland. The little bee was worried too, because each day that the wise woman of the wood would visit, he could see the lines that life had left on her face, and he could see her getting older, and he was worried. He was worried that he wouldn't have many days left with her, and that he didn't know everything that he needed to know about the woodland in order to look after it and make sure that he did as good a job as she did. And so, the little bee came up with a plan. He knew of a little bit of folklore that if you went and asked the cuckoo how long you had left to live, the cuckoo would tell you by calling out cuckoo. And however many times he called, that was how many years you had left. The other ivy bees, they laughed. They said, that's just a little bit of folklore. You don't want to believe that. But no. The ivy bee was pretty sure and so he set off to find the cuckoo to ask the cuckoo how long the wise woman of the wood had left. He flew deep into the woodland until he saw on a branch the barred bellied grey winged cuckoo all fluffed up and ready for his flight to return to warmer climes because the cuckoos don't stay here in the winter it's too cold. 
And he went to the cuckoo, he said, cuckoo, cuckoo, can you tell me how long the wise woman of the wood has to live? Whew. Why do you want to know that, said the cuckoo. I need to know so that I can preserve her knowledge and keep it safe and look after this woodland when she's gone. Well, that's a very re worthy reason, said the cuckoo. But you must understand, little bee, that once I have spoken, there is no way to take back those words. Very well, said the little bee. I understand. And so the cuckoo puffed up his feathered chest and he began to call. Cuckoo! 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 Is that it? said the little bee. That was it. The cuckoo flew away and was gone for the winter. Three years, thought the little bee. That's no time at all. What am I going to do? Well, what was the little bee going to do? He rushed off to try and find the wise woman of the wood. He checked in the badger sets, he checked up in the rookeries, he checked in the squirrel drays and down in the fox dens, but he couldn't find her and eventually, fed up and feeling very sorry for himself, he headed all the way back to his sandy, sunny nest. And there was the wise woman of the wood waiting for him. She was worried about him. Where have you been, little bee? I went to see the cuckoo, said the bee. I wanted to know how long you had to live so that we may celebrate every day and use your knowledge well and keep it and so that I may learn it all and, and share it with the other animals. And I know, I know how long you have. No, no, little bee, said the wise woman of the wood. I do not want to know that. No, but I know how long you have to live. No, no, little bee, I don't want to know. I have enjoyed every day that I have had in this woodland and I will enjoy every day that I have left. But do not tell me. Do not tell me how long I have left. It is no matter. But it is, said the little bee. You need to make sure you have given us all your knowledge. Little bee, said the wise woman of the wood. Do not worry. I have passed this knowledge through magic to the humans and they have formed a group called Friends of Troopers Hill. And these friends, they will look after the woodland when I am gone, because it is a big job. It's a big job that needs many people, and it cannot fall to just one little bee. I hope you enjoyed that story. That story is called The Ivy Bee, The Cuckoo and The Wise Woman of the Wood. If you hear a cuckoo in the spring, do listen out for it. Don't listen because you want to know how many years you have left to live because that is just folklore, that is. Listen because the cuckoo is actually quite a rare bird now. And watch out for that little bee in the autumn in amongst the ivy. It might look like a honey bee, but look a bit closer. And if it's taking the pollen of the ivy flowers, it's more than likely an ivy bee. And if you see the wise woman of the wood, do let me know. Toodle-pip.